I'm Kara Ray, founder of The Powerful and Uncensored Entrepreneurs. I'm a mother, stepmother to three beautiful children. I'm a wife and a proud entrepreneur. I'm a mindset coach specifically for the powerful and ambitious online female entrepreneurs who desire to create wealth and abundance in all areas of their life. The Powerful and Uncensored Mompreneur Podcast is for the ambitious women and mothers who are ready to rise together and empower one another. Get plugged in each week for unfiltered and uncensored conversations between myself and industry leaders who are here to support you. They have unwavering points of views and empower women to believe in themselves. We will be discussing business, spirituality, sexuality, energy, strong points of views, manifestation, and what I like to call breaking the stigma topics, conversations that will no longer be silenced. This is a safe place to reclaim your power of being a woman. Let's dive in. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Powerful and Uncensored Mompreneur Podcast. Today I'm excited because I have Emily Whiteside, that's how you say your last name, correct? Yes, correct. Yay. Okay. <laughs> I always aim to have people's like, names correct because it's important to them. But anyways, you guys. So <laughs> Emily is a former fitness coach and she's turned business coach who focuses on mindset, spirituality, and, stra- and strategy to help fitness professionals amplify their business. So welcome. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to have this discussion with you because I haven't – the questions that I'm going to be asking you, I haven't really – had, you know, this conversation with anyone yet. So it's very unique. And so I like this. Um, But first for our listeners, do you want to just give them a little bit more detail about who you are and how you got started in the the fitness industry, turning coaching industry, just so that they can get to know you and resonate with your message? Yes, absolutely. So my fitness journey started when I was like 16 years old. It has been a long journey. Um, I started lifting weights when I was 16 and really found like a passion for fitness, really found that, um, that drive for fitness. And I actually went to get my bachelor's degree. Um, I worked my entire life to get into vet school. So I, um, actually went to my bachelor's degree with the thought of I'm going to vet school. So I majored in biology and then I got into vet school, which was like amazing. And I was celebrating. I was excited. And three months before I was supposed to leave and enter into vet school, I like really realized that it wasn't my passion. And my passion was really fitness and fitness coaching. And I was a personal trainer at the time um, while I was doing my undergrad. And it was scary. It was like the first time I really trusted my intuition and felt pulled to kind of like explore this fitness thing. And so after I had graduated and kind of decided, like, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life, but I'm going to do something related to fitness. So that's when, like, the fitness coaching industry was just starting to boom and, you know, fitness coaches were online were just starting to become a thing. And I didn't believe that I could do that. I didn't have the confidence. Just like everybody, we all lack that insecurity, that confidence. Um, So I severely lacked Um, confidence, like very, very severely. And that held me back from starting. But what I did do was I went into personal training and I did that for a few years and then slowly um, got into the online fitness coaching realm of things. And I built that business up. I loved freaking doing it. It was amazing. But then I wasn't feeling aligned with it anymore and kind of wanted to just change paths a little bit. So fitness was really like my Um, gateway to a lot of things in my life. It was a gateway to confidence. It was a gateway to the business that I have now, which is business coaching. And it was just a gateway into like who I truly am. So fitness like was to thank for all of that stuff. It was, it's been a rough journey, but it was amazing. So I love that you were diving into how it was like this gateway into confidence and just really embracing who you are and trusting like those intuitive nudges. And you and I had discussed before about, you know, being in different fields or wanting to be in different fields. Like I worked as a paramedic for years. You wanted to work in the veterinarian industry. And so it's just incredible how you can transition sometimes and feel this intuitive nudge. And this is like when we say intuitive nudge, you guys, it's this, it's this feeling that you know that this is the right direction you're supposed to take. It is this undeniable hell yes feeling that you go for it. And so it sometimes it can take some time to, to really sink in that that's your intuition that's telling you like, hey, this is your step, like go this way. No, no, trust me, go this way. Um, but 
it's interesting that we talk about it as like this gateway to like confidence because truly that was all like within you the entire time, but really stepping into something that you were passionate about really brought that out because it was something you loved. So I just think that's important to touch on for, you know, online female entrepreneurs, even though even women who are into fitness and working in that, in that industry itself too, because confidence is this huge for a woman, huge for a woman. And I find so many women walk around with a lack of confidence And I used to be this woman as well. And I honestly, and I'm touching on this because when I stepped into the coaching industry, it was the same thing for me. It all of a sudden I was gaining a ton of confidence. I was actually focusing on myself. I was placing myself first. I was doing things. I made myself a priority and I'm not sure how this industry made me feel this way and made me feel like I could take care of myself, but anything that focuses on me and I can do things for myself is a win in my books. And so I just wish all women would prioritize themselves no matter what industry that they're in and just really, you know, follow that intuition on what you feel your purpose is. It's Oh my God. Yeah. It's Absolutely. placed on your heart for a reason. Like I was just talking to my coach about this yesterday and she's like, do you firmly beyond a shadow of a doubt believe that this is your purpose in life? And I was like, yeah, like there is <laughs> no, there is no question. I don't say, well, you see, no, like this is, this is what I'm passionate about is helping women. And so if you're passionate about something like I, this is uncensored. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to touch on, you know, the fitness side of it and the coaching and what you really dive into. Let's talk about the confidence piece though, before we go there. So we were talking about confidence and how this is important. So if you are coaching someone and you were coaching them in regards to like regaining that confidence, like what is something like, what's something that you would tell them that's important in regards to regaining that confidence? I hope that question made sense. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, that question okay. makes total sense. That question makes total sense. So like I said in the past, like I severely lacked confidence, like severely, severely, severely. I didn't, you know, believe in myself and the way I would coach somebody if they're, I mean, I have a lot of clients who are very insecure. They're very unconfident, especially when they step into the coaching industry, like when they're new to it, or, you know, maybe they have a little bit of traction. They're unconfident because they're comparing themselves to somebody else. So the first thing I say is stop scrolling on Instagram, stop scrolling on Facebook and stop comparing yourself to other people's chapter 20 when you're at chapter one. That's like first and foremost. I like, you know, I used to constantly compare myself to other people. And then the second piece of advice is like rewrite your labels that you label yourself. So the reason we feel unconfident is because we're telling ourselves I am ugly or I am not capable or I am out of shape. We're saying these these words after I am. And I am is such a powerful, powerful statement. Our subconscious mind like soaks that in and it creates an identity out of that. So it's really important to make sure that you don't say I am um, insecure or I am not worth it or something like that. You want to have these powerful affirmations. Like I am confident. I am sexy. I am a badass entrepreneur, things like that, because your subconscious mind takes everything you say literally. And that I am statement is so powerful. And like a third piece of like just redefining your confidence and rediscovering your confidence, I guess I should say, is take care of yourself. Like self-prioritize, just like you were saying, that's so, so important for confidence. And it's funny that entrepreneurship kind of throws you into that self-care. Like you have to be in full on self-care mode to see success in your business. And um, so for me, like self-care is my morning routines, but it's also like if I want to feel confident, it's putting makeup on every day and doing my hair because that makes me feel confident. And that's just something that makes me feel alive. It makes me feel passionate. It just turns me on. I'm in that turned on energy when I look good. So that's why even though I work from home every single day, I'm not wearing, I mean, right now I'm wearing sweatpants, but most of the time I'm not wearing sweatpants (laughs) and you know, no makeup on. And just because that, not that there's anything wrong with that at all, but to me, I want to feel sexy. I want to feel confident in myself when I work because that's when I feel most creative. So it's just going back to the like self-care, like do what makes you feel good. Mm-hmm. 100%. I actually was just doing like a, I did a free training inside my community in regards to spirituality and self-care and how we overcomplicate the crap out of so many things in our life. And if we would just stop for a moment and do what we ultimately desire to do, and stop thinking about what everybody else is going to say or think or be 
because each one of us is unique. And I feel like society is just at a loss here where they don't recognize that each individual is so different. So just because I, you know, love to just, I don't wear makeup. So just like you, how make, wearing makeup makes you feel so good. Wearing makeup burns my eyeballs. So yes. <laughs> like, it does not make me feel very good. But doing my hair and making myself feel sexy in a different way does make me feel good. Mm. I don't feel guilty for the fact that I can't, like that I don't wear makeup often. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. But if it makes you feel good, I'm like, hell yeah, it does. Like, good for you. Like, do what makes you feel good. But it doesn't have to look the same. So it's important to note that like the way Emily is doing something versus the way my, I'm doing something can look drastically different, but still give the feeling of confidence or like self-worth and all these different things that we're looking for in a different way, in a different way. So when I was talking about spirituality and like I was referring to it in like your business and how it can affect things, I wanted to implement spirituality so long ago, but I just really didn't know how. I was like, oh, I need to do the yoga. I need to do this. I have to do the affirmations. I have to do the gratitude. Like I had to do all the things. And that's not what it is. Like a spiritual practice literally can be having a bubble bath and reading if that's what it looks like to you. It had to have, does not have to be complicated. It's like how I used to complicate the crap out of fitness because I didn't know what to do. Yeah. And the thing is, is that even though I didn't fully know what to do, I just didn't start until one day where I was like, okay, I need to start, which I need to start again. This is a great conversation <laughs> to happen at the moment. Um, because I had, I had, honestly, I had my daughter and I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll just do the gym after my pregnancy. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, but prior to my daughter, I had a personal trainer. I was going to the gym. I had made myself a priority. It became a, like a positive habit. I was eating healthy foods and it was, it felt, it felt amazing. And so I think it's important to like talk about how fitness can, can like having a fitness routine can really help with like your self-worth, your confidence, your, the way that you perceive yourself, because really internally, how you feel about yourself is directly reflected on the outside. So if you're feeling depressed and anxious and scared and worried and tired all the time, that's going to reflect on the outside and other people are going to feel this. And so in regards to like the coaching area that you do and you're working on like confidence and these things, what are some of like the biggest like aha moments people have had in regards to like implementing a fitness routine or like what's the biggest aha moment they've had and like what they see in themselves? It's just, I think the biggest aha moment is it's always been inside of them. Like so often we look for these outside sources, right? We look for these outside sources to happiness, to fulfillment. We try to find that in significant others. I've been there, done that, does not work. You cannot be codependent in a relationship. Um, (laughs) And we also, you know, we look for um, happiness and things that we buy or, you know, experiences we go on, but it's always within you. You'll never, you're never going to find true confidence, true happiness, true fulfillment and anything else but you. So Mm -hmm. when people start these fitness routines or start this entrepreneur entrepreneurial journey and finally invest in themselves and invest in a coach and all the self care stuff, it just reawakens something. It like reawakens that inner goddess. So it's all already in you. That's like the biggest thing to know. It's like, it's all there. You just have to realize that it's not, it doesn't come from an outside source. It comes from, it doesn't. We all, I think, um, you know, I talk about society a lot, but like we've been taught that, you know, sometimes we need to seek this like outside validation. Oh, good job. You did so great. Or look at you. You're amazing. Like you've lost this much weight. Or like we look for other people to, to give us this validation, to feel good about what we're doing, where we should be feeling good about it without anybody's uh, like outer expectations or validations. And I like how you touched on earlier, like the comparison. I believe this is where comparison and validation come into play. And they're like, two peas in a pod almost that are not (laughs) and how they're just like I call it comparisonitis so when I was working well I still am like in the online field it it can like it is like there's a huge pool so it can become so overwhelming with a whole bunch of other women in this industry working and you know posting all these incredible aha moments that they have or these things that they're doing you're like ah shit, why am I not there? And so, um, it can get like a little bit frustrating, but I knew what I needed to do was I needed to put my blinders on because I literally was comparing, like you said before, like my chapter 10 to somebody's chapter 50. And 
it wasn't fair and it wasn't giving, it was basically doing a disservice to myself, not to Mm -hmm. other people, to myself and to my clients. And so I think it's so important to talk about how, why do we feel we need validation? Like, I just, I want to talk about that. Cause like, why do people feel they need validation? (laughs) I think that just comes from society really. Like we're always, we're always validating, like even as women, like, I mean, at least for me, like I was always validating how I looked by how a man would comment on me and like say like, oh, you look beautiful today or oh, you're hot. Like we're always looking for that validation. Even as kids, like if you think like back to when you were a child, you're always looking for that validation from your parents. If you get a good report card, you instantly want to hear good job. That's usually what we heard. We got, we got instant validation from our parents and it's just something that we, I think, take on as adults but it becomes, instead of becoming something that's empowering, it can become something that's destructive and disempowering. And just like you were saying, like I was scrolling through social media and I would compare myself to these other people. I used to always do that to myself, but with fitness. And I'd look at these women with these like beautiful bodies, probably Photoshopped, probably not even real. And I would be like, why can't I look like them? And it, you know, and then it's like, I, I worked so hard in the gym. I'd spend like three to four hours in the gym at one point in my life every single day to look like that. And it's like, all I'm seeking is outside validation, right? For someone yeah. to be like, oh, wow, your body's really changed. You look really good, but it doesn't really do anything to me in the long run, right? It's just like that instant hit. It's like an endorphin hit. Like um, if you get a like on Instagram, those are just like little endorphin hits yeah. and they're not going to do anything for you in the long run. It's just like a shot of like a drug or something. It's like you get that little shot, that little dose of the endorphin rush, and then it's over. And then you look for it again and again and again. And that can be very, very destructive in itself. hundred <laughs> percent. And I just, I think women need to hear that it's okay for you not to look the way society expects you to, especially in the fitness industry. Because I myself, I'm an overweight woman and I've been overweight a lot of my life. And so I was always called the fat kid, the chubby kid, the many other words under the sun that I just feel not to repeat at the moment. And I was constantly judged for my weight. And then the way when I would go buy clothing or like even family members would say, oh, maybe you need to lose weight. Maybe you need to do this. And it just put a lot of extra stress. And so as a child, we had moved away from, from our home and from our family when I was, I think I was 13. And that triggered, uh, like I, I was binge eating. So I would start eating and then I would start eating more and more and more because I was lonely and I was searching for a validation that came from food. Basically food made me feel good on the inside. And this is how negative habits happen. And then when I wanted to go to the gym, I felt judged I felt insecure. I felt like it wasn't the space that I could be in until I just started pushing myself. And then I pushed my out of that insecurity and just basically like in the online space had to put blinders on and just focus on what I was doing. And it helped a lot because really at the end of the day, like I just wish a lot of people when they were going to the gym or having a fitness routine understood that people are trying to better themselves. No matter which, which chapter you're at, where you're chapter one or your chapter 10, no matter what it is, People are trying to better themselves with their health, with whatever it is that it is providing them, self-worth, their health. I'm not sure which case it is for every person, but that was a huge insecurity for myself. So like, what would you talk to? So say, for example, like, say you were talking to me, like I'm overweight and I had insecurities about going to the gym or starting a fitness routine. Like, what is something that you would help guide me through so that I would feel more confident in stepping out of, you know, like my comfort zone? Right. Yeah. I mean, that's a total, like when I was fitness coaching, there was always something that really came up is like, I'm intimidated to go to the gym. I've been there, done that. Um, and it is intimidating at first. There are a lot of insecurities, but like you said, like the, the biggest tip that I can give there is to put your blinders on. And it might not be like, you have to kind of wean yourself into the gym. Maybe, maybe it's like starting at, at home workouts and building your confidence up there and like understanding the movements Um, And then slowly going to a gym and starting with classes and then making your way to the floor is just kind of building up that ladder. And like you can use that analogy for like anything, even entrepreneurial journey. And like I have a lot of clients that are afraid to do live videos and, you know, speak on, you know, Facebook lives and Instagram lives and stories. And it's like just use a ladder and just like kind of almost force yourself to do it in a way, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be like full on 
go on all out and like hit the the weightlifting floor and you know wear an outfit that you feel uncomfortable in it can just be a small step like go to the gym and take a class with other people I love it so I have a question in regards to so because you personally have like your own fitness journey and you are mainly correct me if I'm wrong like you're coaching fitness coaches correct, correct. to have like yeah. this like you know the business that they ultimately desire to manifest all these incredible things um so In regards to like your own personal fitness journey, how has this greatly influenced your business? Oh my gosh, that's such a good question because (laughs) literally I feel like if I never would have stepped into fitness, I never would have even started this life. It's so crazy that like, you know, you can just look back at one instant in your life and just be like, that changed it all. But Mm -hmm. if I go back to like my fitness journey, like before it started, I was this really, really insecure girl. I was a very unconfident, um, even in elementary school, I can remember being so unconfident in school, around other girls, around other boys. And um, the gym was the first time in my entire life where I stepped into it. And of course, at first, like the first like month or so, I was very like insecure, but it was the first time in my life where when I stepped into the gym, I felt like a goddess. I felt like this power from within me. It was like something I couldn't even explain and it became an obsession and it did eventually become an unhealthy obsession, but um, it did become an obsession for me, but something where I could like find my power and find my confidence. And when I was in the gym, I was so turned on for life. That's when like, I just felt like amazing, like a goddess. Like I keep saying that, but that's like how I like represent myself at that time. I just felt like a goddess. And then, Mm -hmm. so every time I'd step outside of the gym, like go to school or go to parties or whatever, I, I had that insecurity, that unconfidence still, but every time I stepped in the gym, I felt that power again. Um, so that's really helped me realize in my business, like what turns me on? Like that's the first time in my life, I guess I've, I've felt turned on. And by turned on, I mean like not sexually, but like turned on like passionate wise. Yeah. And I, I realized like, wow, this is passion. This is my intuition. This is, it was almost a spiritual practice for me going to the yeah. gym. It was where I was not in my head where I just kind of let downloads come to me. I just felt like I'm in a meditative state. And, um, so in my business, that's really helped because I know when something feels right and when it's my intuition calling me and when it's a a passion driven thing, as opposed to my ego mind, or as opposed to something I feel like I have to hustle and do. Um, so it's really helped in that sense, just by, um, giving me like, you know, the confidence to just do things like I've changed my, I've been through so much with my body, like the, the weight loss, the anorexia, the binge eating, and then the weight gain and, you know, hating my body. And it's all just like the cyclical pattern where I finally found like a body that I freaking love. And, and I went through the same thing with my business, right? I went through the same thing, these ups and downs in my business, just like I did with my body and finally found in both my body and, and in my business, I found that the best way I see success is when I'm following my intuition. And when I'm not listening to anybody else, I'm not listening to the hustle. I'm not listening to um, somebody's top 10 tips for success. And I'm just doing things my way. And when I do things my way and I feel that inner goddess, I feel that turned on energy, things always work out for the best. So I can, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say, so I can chalk that up to fitness because that's, literally how I've gotten to where I am now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that even like it with a, whether it's in the fitness industry and in the coaching industry, whatever industry you're in, there's only so much like content that you can consume mm-hmm. before you can just go out and start creating. So like, <clears throat> pardon me. I like that you touched on how like, you know, I could continue to go and, and, and listen to all this free content, but like, when am I going to start taking action towards these things? And I think with a, like with a fitness routine, whether, or if you're working with a coach or you're trying to upscale your business, every single thing that you're doing in your life requires you to take action. Things don't just come to you by sitting on your ass. Yes. Like I just need to be so blunt about that because I used to be the person who thought that, that I could just sit there and I could write down all the affirmations and be this like, I'm like, but I'm doing those things, but I was never taking action towards that. And this leads into the next question I want to ask you about, like, you know, you talk about reaching this next level. 
And so like, what does that, you know, mean to you in regards to like embodying this next level version of yourself or even for your clients? Because when I'm talking to, to, you know, my clients or I'm working through my programs and I talk to them about embodying this next level version of themselves, I talk about this next level that they technically aren't at right now and they need to embody that now. Because if they're wanting to attract, to attract like the, the wealth, the abundance, the like, you know, that body, all those different things that requires you acting at that level. Like what feelings, like, so do you agree with me upon that? Oh my God. Yeah, absolutely. Like 110%. If you want to achieve the next level, if you want to be that higher level version of yourself, you have to embody it now. And, you know, embodying that, like first and foremost, like you have to realize, like define who that highest level version is. Um, if you don't have a clear path and you can't um, in your mind visualize who she is, how she feels, what she looks like, what she's doing every single day, what sparks her um, energy, what she's passionate about. If you can't define that, then it's going to be really hard to do this process. It's going to be really hard to embody it. But yeah, like embodying my highest level version has, I'm super into the spirituality and the woo -woo side of things in business. And that has literally helped me manifest the, the life of my dreams. And that helps my clients manifest the life of their dreams. And embodying means when you embody that higher level version, to me, what that means is you start feeling the emotions, thinking the way that she would think and acting the way that she would act. So yeah. for example, a lot of the times I hear my clients say like, um, I'll tell them to like, okay, book a photo shoot. Like, you know, you're a professional now, you have a business, even if you don't have clients, like book a photo shoot. And they use things like, well, I can't afford it. And then I ask them, it's like, okay, it's $300 for the hour. And what would the six figure version of yourself say to that yeah. photo shoot, that $300 photo shoot? She'd say, absolutely no problem. It's not an issue because this photo shoot is going to help me attract in my soulmate clients. It's going to help me attract in a new level of clients, a high ticket clients. So it's really starting to like think and act the way that your highest level version would. Stop using yeah. words like I can't afford it. Stop using words like... Um, that's not for me yet. I have to wait until this because you don't, if you want something now, if you want to manifest that desire in, you have to be an ener energetic match for that desire. Yes. And if you want it now, but you're not willing to take action, you don't want it enough. Yes, exactly. 100%. Yeah. I was actually just talking to like another coach um, and her name is Stephanie and she talks so firmly about like, if you're not going to really like up level yourself, then you don't want it. Like, I'm going to be the person who calls you out in your shit. And I'm the same way. Like I invested thousands of dollars, like thousands of dollars before I even started to see a cent in my business. Yes. I did the photo shoots. I hired the graphic designer. I hired the coach. I was doing the damn thing and investing in all these things and creating a ton of content without having an income. Yes. And I could have sat there and said, well, I can't afford it. I can't do this. But magically every single month, my husband and I made this work. Yeah, like, absolutely. Every single time. Because if you actually want it and it's meant for you, it will happen. And mm -hmm. yes, you know, sometimes you have to transition from different coach or you transition your business or you do the things that you feel called to do. That's fine. But ultimately to step into that version, I had to invest. Like I even invested in high level masterminds. I invested in other programs on top of my coaching. And I don't regret that. Because no. I've learned so many things that have impacted me as a person, that has impacted my relationship with my husband, with my children in so many ways. So that investment, it always pays for, your, for itself. Like if women are going into it being like, oh, well, I'm never going to make this money back. Yeah, you yeah, probably are never going to make <laughs> this money back if you're sitting there telling exactly. yourself every freaking day. Like, <laughs> but if you're going into it with the mindset of like, you know, this investment will have tenfolds of a return because I'm putting in the action, because I'm stepping into this space, because I know that this is the next level. This is what it takes. You're going to attract that in. Like you were talking about that, like energetic match. There does, like, I believe in the woo. And I also believe in the strategy. Like I'm kind of like, you know, a mix of like the, the two, but like yeah. I love like manifestation, which I want to talk to you about. I love affirmations. I love like messy action, alignment, universe, the universal laws. Like they, I love them. And I love crystals and everything woo. Yeah, <laughs> I am yes. woo. I'm like, <laughs> okay, but if you're not showing up and posting in your business, if you're not doing the photo shoots, if you're not doing the other strategy sides of things, 
there's, there's still something out of alignment. So like, I feel like the two of them still fit so closely together. Um, but anyways, that's a whole other topic, but I want to talk about manifestation with you. So, because I know that there's so many people who get, so I think they misunderstand the word of manifestation. And so do you want to kind of slightly explain what you mean, like what your opinion of manifestation is? Yeah. So manifestation to me, it just means that whatever it is, whatever goal you're trying to achieve or whatever you're trying to call in, whatever um, desire you have, it's just bringing it into the physical reality. Just like just bringing it here because everything is possible for each and every one of us. Um, For so long, I played in victim mentality. Like I can never have the the six figure business. I can never be an entrepreneur. I can never have a sexy body. And it wasn't until I started to actually believe that that was true for me. Like I can have anything I want. You can have anything you want. It's all possible for each and every one of us. So Mm -hmm. when I stopped playing this victim mentality, I lived in victim mentality, like literally my entire life, Um, (laughs) like being completely honest. So this personal development journey has really helped pull me out of that, you know, a few years ago when I started on the personal development journey. But um, yeah, it just like really helped me realize that I can manifest in anything that I want. And I, I have, I literally have. And it was just because I, I believed it. And then I started to think as if I've already had it. And that's the biggest thing is like, people are like, okay, yeah, I can, I can see myself having an amazing body or I can see myself now having um, a six figure business, but they're not willing to, to actually take the action and like yeah. decide that that is for them. Like it's all in a decision. It's literally just a decision. I, deserve this and it's for me and it's going to happen. And there's yeah. no going backwards. There's no, um, you know, failure is not an option with manifestation. And I think that a lot of people are back and forth with like, Oh, but what if I fail? And then this doesn't happen. You can't think that way. You just have to go all in in your desires and know that they're going to happen. Yeah. And I think a big, like a good quote for people to, to really like fall back upon is, um, you know, this or something greater. I won't settle for anything less. Like it's no matter what in life, like things will happen and being so transparent with people, like the universe has this lovely way of testing you and bringing things into, into your life that sometimes don't always feel you're like, I didn't ask for that. (laughs) Yes. But like the universe is going to make sure that you're prepared for this. Like whatever you believe in is going to make sure like, do you want this, this bad? Because if you're not willing to go to move through this, this and this, then you're not ready for this. And I'm not going to give you this until you move through this. And so I think people get so confused by like, even when I started my journey, I wasn't making money. And then all of a sudden I started owing money in different areas that were starting to come up. And I'm like, what the, what the heck is happening? Yeah. I don't know what's going on. And then once I started like embodying a different way, like there's new level, new devil. So I always feel like if something happens and all of a sudden you're owing a large sum of money or some major thing happens in your life, there is a huge lesson for you to learn at some point, or there's some, there's something bigger at the end of this. And so I believe that things like happen for a reason. And there was time, like I used to play the victim mentality where I'm like, Oh my God. Okay. I have to do all of these things. Poor me. Woe is me. Why do I have to do this? Why is everybody out to get me? And now like being honest, the those things still creep up. There's still days where I'm like, life sucks. Like yeah. I'm, in. <laughs> I'm not going to awesome. pretend there's days that I'm like, I don't, I don't like skip around with rainbows shooting out of my ass every day. Like, <laughs> I'm, there's days that I have a bad day and that's okay. But I also know that I can, I used to sit there for months instead of sitting there for a day. So there's no. like, like emotions are meant to be felt. And I think people forget that like in business, when we talk about like, you need to be your highest self. Well, your highest self is still going to have bad days and they're not going to like just ignore those days. They're going to process those emotions. They're going to feel them. And then they're going to be like, okay, does this serve me anymore? No, let's deal with it and let's move forward. But if you keep suppressing it, it's just going to keep coming back and hitting you in the face. Like I'm a firm believer of being like so transparent, like even with you, like I wasn't feeling good earlier this week. I had to reschedule and I had to be honest. Do I want to do that? Does that make me feel like I'm integrity? Not all the time, but like if I'm not real with someone about how I don't feel good, how am I supposed to give grace to other people when they're like, if someone's not willing to do the same for me or I'm not willing to ask for that? Like there's so much to learn in asking for things and like letting your ego aside. 
like I could go in all different directions in this topic. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. It's, but I love what you said about like, if, if the universe g- gives you something and you kind of ignore it, like you suppress it, right? Like we do that so often is like, we suppress these things. We suppress these like quote unquote bad things that happen, these struggles that happen. And the universe is going to keep showing that in different ways until we are forced to change direction. Yeah. And I've seen that happen in my life before just you know, like with money issues, like back when I had, I was broke as shit. And I was, you know, just starting my fitness coaching business. I was working as a personal trainer and I, I, I was broke as shit. And, um, I remember like certain circumstances where like things would come up with like my money, like a bill would be due and I kind of ignore it. And like, it was just these things, like it kept showing up in different ways until I was like, it, something hit me and was like, Oh my God, I need to fix this now. Yeah. Like you need to go work on this shit right now. And it's just funny because if you don't, don't fix it, you know, and right now the universe will keep giving it to you. It's going to keep showing up. So it will. And like, Careful. no matter which area you work in, no matter what you do in life, like even if you're not in the coaching industry, this will yeah. still happen to you. Like this isn't just for like coaches. It's not just like, Ooh, this only happens to a select amount of people. <laughs> no, <laughs> <Not everybody. laughs> like, it's, and I think there's just, there's like strength and empowerment for the way that you can handle the situation. Yes. And I think like the biggest thing is because we're so taught that you know, at least I see in the industry, like in the coaching industry a lot, like you have to be like this, this high vibe all the time. And I feel yeah. like that's just doing a disservice to people because we're human. Like we feel things, we get sick, we have emotions. Yes. I feel like you should like 90% of the time really be, like, be at that like high vibe state. And there should be like time spent and, you know, space open for like the things to happen to process because like it's just, it is life. And we have to hold space for the things that happen. And I think there's just a difference in like sitting and sulking compared to just like holding space for what happens in life. And yeah. so I'm definitely a coach that is like, okay, I'm like, I'm not like, no, forget about this. Like, don't feel that way. No, I'm like, you feel it. Like you feel everything that you're going through, every emotion, every word, everything that's happening in your life, because you're meant to hear it. And it's meant to happen. You wouldn't feel that emotion if it wasn't meant for you to feel. Yes. Like, Absolutely. We have feelings for a reason. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I'm not, I just, I don't, I guess I'm not the person who feels that people have to be like this high vibe all the time because that's, that's just not who everybody is all the time. There are definitely some people who are, and I love that, but I definitely want people to feel that they can be like just energetically themselves. Like yes. don't put on a facade. Don't pretend that you're constantly in a certain state. If you're not like, right. <laughs> like don't it's just it doesn't you're pretending then that's not doing anything for you like Absolutely. in as like a coach I'm firm on authenticity so when I talk to my clients or I have podcast interviews I make sure that people know I'm real so that like when I'm sitting with you you would know like if you were sitting on my couch with me we would have the same kind of conversation and I would be the same way and I would talk about how I feel I love conversation but it's yeah. just like I want people to know that this is me. So like, take it or leave it people. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Um, and like, don't, I think a lot of people get afraid of like, so when I started this personal development journey, I was like kind of afraid because when you think of high vibe, you think of like all these good emotions, right? Like happy, you should feel happiness. You should feel positive. So then when I did start to feel negative or when I did start to feel sadness or anger, I would push that aside because I thought that was wrong Mm -hmm. and they're just emotions if you know in their their polarity like if we didn't have um anger we wouldn't know what happiness feels like right so it's an emotion happiness is an emotion we don't try to push off happiness we don't try to push off excitement so why are you trying to push off anger why are you trying to push off sadness you need to feel those feelings that's the way that it will move through your body is just allowing it Well, I think the biggest difference is like how you process it too. Like you can Mm -hmm. feel those emotions, but there's also like, you know, you were talking about how like the emotions need to be felt. There's a yin and a yang. There's a masculine and feminine. There is a polarity. There's a, like a South pole, the North pole. There's all these different things that are meant to be there for a reason. So like, why are we constantly pushing away from them? But there's also, so like you can feel the emotion, but the emotional intelligence comes in on how you perceive it. 
and yes. how you allow it to affect other things in your life. That's the biggest thing. So something major could happen in my life today, but that does not mean that I have to allow that energy to affect my call with you, to affect my relationship with my husband or anything else that goes on in my life. Cause that's one thing. And that one thing people like, it's like that analogy when all of a sudden you wake up in the morning and you step, stub your toe and you're like, ah, oh, crap. And then all of a sudden your car doesn't start or you hit all the red lights or like, then you like get to work and you spill your coffee in your white shirt. And like, you're like, this day sucks. That's yeah. the energy that you're putting out. And all right. So I have one last question for you. So in regards, like we had talked about so many different things in regards to comparison, fitness, we talked about like ups and downs. We talked about, you know, manifestation, emotions, how they're meant to be felt. So as a woman, as an online coach, as a woman who coaches women in the fitness industry and just women in general, what is probably like the, you know, one piece of advice that you wish women knew that you just were like, oh, I wish all women knew this. That there's an inner goddess in every single one of us. And when you live life by your inner goddess, and I know this sounds cliche, but like when you live life by your inner goddess and you're being truly authentically yourself, that's when you are a magnet for all of your desires. Like everything is possible for you. And there is so much magic in just being that inner goddess, just allowing that, um, that version of you to show up and come out. And I mean, it, it can take a lot of work, but just, I guess stop comparing yourself. Stop comparing yourself to everybody else and just be you. As cliche as that sounds, but it's so true. That's where all the power is. I don't think it sounds cliche and I I don't because I I believe that every woman has like an inner goddess. Like I've taken programs in regards to like bringing out my inner goddess and really talking, you know, about her. And like, it's, it's important that women know this, like that we should, like we should treat our bodies as a temple, but we also are like extremely emotional, but emotionally intelligent beings. And we feel on so many levels and that, taking care of our mind, body, and soul is so important. Like I believe that each woman should call themselves a goddess because you are a freaking goddess and like you should walk around and own your, own your shit. Like your shit don't stink. Like literally that's a version of women. I want all women to know that they are just like absolutely like gorgeous in all aspects. And especially, you know, coming from myself because I've struggled with, you know, you know, people calling me every name under the sun about my weight and about who I am as a woman or what I do as a mom or parenting that I am so done with everybody giving me their opinions or their outer expectations that I can only rely on myself. Like, I think that was the biggest thing that I learned in the entrepreneurial industry or even in myself is that I kept seeking, like we were talking about these outside validations or these needs to this comparison where really I was searching for all the answers, but I had the answers all along. They were always with me. And if I just sat there and I just allowed myself to give them to me, like they're there. (laughs) So everything that you want is inside of you already. Every single thing, every, Mm -hmm. you know, like even with like wanting to start a business and like not knowing how, like all the answers are always inside of you. And like, yeah, we can find coaches and I highly, highly suggest in um, investing in yourself and learning more and growing because that just speeds up the process. But you are always the power. And a coach, you should never go into an investment thinking that um, they're going to fix you or that they are going to be the ones who make you money because they don't coaches help elevate you. They help you grow. They help you learn more. They help you step into your power, your highest level self, but you are the one you're the maker. You're the one who creates that. So it's already in you. Well, and I also think it's important that people like in the coaching industry, like you can work with multiple women, you can work with multiple coaches. Like you don't have to just look into this large pool and be like, okay, I'm, I'm only working with this coach. Like there's, there's, you know, different people that I've worked with for three months. I've worked with my one coach for almost a year now. Like, but there's also times where you can feel a transition and a need to change directions and who you're working with. And that's okay. And like, as a coach, I know that there's going to be clients that I have that are going to be these soulmate freaking clients that I have for for probably like years. But then I also know that I'm going to have clients that choose like after working with me for a few months, they want to change direction and that's okay. Like there's seasons of people's life that you're there for. Like, I think Mm -hmm. that resonates with everything. Like we've had friends in our lives that 
that were there for a season and are no longer there and we love from afar. And that is the same thing with the coaching industry. Like I'm very open to, to working with women and coaches have such a unique way of teaching or of, you know, cause they're, we're all unique human beings. So the way that you coach, we could have very similar, you know, things we coach in, but we also coach in very different, you know, areas of the coaching industry. So like how you're going to coach something is going to be very different on how I'm coaching and that's okay. But like, I know there, like when I was first looking for my coach, it's like she magically dropped, fell into my lap. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, it's like all of a sudden I went online and I'm like, I have to work with her. Like there was yes. no questions asked. I was like, I don't know how much this is going to cost. And I was crapping my pants the entire time because I'd never invested an amount of money like that in my freaking life on myself. Very, yeah. She told me the number. I was just like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know. I, it's like a stab in the heart a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you're like, what? Are you sure? Did you, was, was it that, that much? And, yeah. But I used to think of it that way where now I'm like, hey, this is an incredible investment. And I said yes at that time. And I'll continue to say yes. But like, I also know, like, if I feel like I have a, I have a, like a time in my life where I'm in a shift from working with my coach to doing like a mastermind or doing like different programs, then working with a coach, I'm still working with someone all the time. And so I think that's important. It can just look different on who you're working with at yes, that time. So that absolutely. like, I'm a coach who believes that sometimes you don't necessarily have to be working with a coach. I'm willing no, that you don't. can- I just think it's incredible to up level. I think that if you wants to constantly like learn new things and up level and have that support system, they're great to have at all times, but there's definitely seasons of people's lives where they just are unsure and unknown and they have to work through that unknown alone sometimes. Right. So, yes. And I did that yeah. like for the first, you know, year when I had first started my fitness coaching business, I did wait. I did wait to invest in a coach because I didn't believe like I was worthy. I believed that I had to wait until I was making money in my business. And so you just have to realize like what energy you're doing it out of when you go to invest in a coach or you say no to a coach. Am I doing it because it's coming out of scarcity? It's coming out of lack or am I making this decision because it's an empowering decision? So that's huge to, you know, realize. And I fully believe in coaches. I will always have a coach in some way, whether that's a one-on-one coach or that's a mastermind, but you know, through this entire entrepreneurial journey, except for my first year in business, um, I have worked with coaches continuously, different coaches, different programs, and done a bunch of different things. And it's only made me a better human, a better coach, a better woman, um, a better partner. Not that I'm like single now, but at the time, like when I did have a relationship, it made me a better partner. Um, so yeah, I, there's so much value in coaches. It's not just about your business. It's not just about making money. It's so much more than that. It is hundred percent more than that. My coach has helped me through a lot of personal issues that I have not, you know, the public doesn't know about, or even a lot of my family doesn't know about because this is a safe place. It's a safe place where like, it's not like your secrets are kept, but in a way, like the things that you just, you need a safe space for them. They're kept in that space in that container. And that container allows you to like, like my coach asks me the real questions that I don't necessarily always want to ask myself, even though I know I should. And that's why, like, like you're saying, like, I'll always have a coach in some shape or form, no matter why, because they always ask me the questions that sometimes I'm hesitant on asking myself. And as a coach, it's important to be real with yourself that sometimes we do that, that like we're human. We learn every single day, like constantly. Um, But the coaching industry is incredible. And so mm-hmm. I just, I know that there's like so many, I, even myself, cause I was the woman who was hesitant before that there's so many women that are listening that are like interested, but they're just hesitant. And I think that just is like, they, the question needs to be answered back to themselves as to why, like, are you sitting in that lack and scarcity mindset or are you just, you know, unsure and haven't really dove into the information? Have you had the consultation calls? Have you looked into who they are? Like, I believe that like a coach that I'm working with, I love her freaking life. I want her life. I want to like be like, not like her, but like myself, but in a version similar, like I want to be in that energy and that's where I want to go. So like if I'm working with a coach and I know that she's like making like 20 K months and she's doing big things, I know I want to do big things and I want to make that money and I want to do the damn thing. So that's the kind of coach I want to work with because her energy is there. So like, it's so important that women know like whatever step you're at, there's always a coach for that. Yes, absolutely. 100%. 
whatever. Yes, schedule there is. is. That is a good quote. <laughs> that is a really good quote. Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, that's a good one. You should write that down, put it on Instagram. I'm or doing something. that right now. <laughs> so yeah. before we, awesome. <laughs> before we, um, you know, this episode was incredible and I love being able to have this conversation with you. Can you let everybody know like your, um, your social media, like how they can follow up with you, how they can get to know, like know you even more. Um, let me know all those, all the social links, like let them know here. Yeah, absolutely. So my Instagram is at Emily Ann Whiteside. That's my full name. And then my Facebook page is Emily Whiteside. And I do have a free Facebook community called the Soul Purpose Biz Babes, where I just do some free trainings on like spirituality and business tips and fun things like that on Facebook. So that's where you can find me. (laughs) And you guys will make sure that all of these are in the show notes as well. So if you don't catch that, it'll be in the show notes and you can click them. They'll just be links that you, that'll take you directly to Emily herself. And so I just want to say thank you again so much for sharing the space with me, for being here, for sharing all your knowledge and all these incredible things. This is a fun conversation. (laughs) It was very fun. Thank you so much for having me. I really did enjoy it. It was good. It was a good one. (laughs) No problem. And so everybody else, you guys, I will see you all in the next episode. Bye guys.